Hi, this is William from New Zealand again. I've just finished building my 50 kilowatt battery. Actually, it's about 45 kilowatts. It's built with um, two Nissan Leaf Generation 2 battery packs. Um, 91 modules. It's actually a few less than the two full packs. Um, I've got um, two solar systems connected to this. The one is a DC Studer VT80. Now this one has got 15 panels on it, which I've basically connected three of them in, in series, I've series three of them together to basically give 120 volts. And this VT80 is, VT80 is just um, a DC solar charge controller, and I've got a, a RCCO2 remote controller on it. Um, basically this just charges the battery, so I've got this to set to charge a battery and cut off at about 58 volts. Um, behind the wall I've got the Solar X Hybrid, which is the one connected to the AC of the house now. That's set at a slightly lower 57, so that's the one that's actually doing the exporting when the battery's full. Um, enough of this, the, um, the stacks of batteries themselves, it's, I've just mounted them up on a tunnel a bit of um, timber frame with a hollow tunnel but so I could put a, a cupboard eater in there to sort of keep the at 18 degrees 16 to 18 because it works a whole lot more efficient and um, I made those um, uh, perspex covers I just bent them and basically I'm using them to just keep the temperature keep the warmth in um, on the side I've got the Watchmon 4 the batterium system as I had in my last video, and that's got the leaf mons, which are on the bottom of the stack. Each of them sort of controlling a stack. I've covered the light up a bit. But basically, they they keep the stack balanced. Um, the stacks themselves, I've connected with um, buzz bars that I made. It's kind of, I think I've got a 30 by 3 copper bar that I've actually made, made up the buzz bars with. Um, and then two connecting ones, also 30 by 3 but um, yeah, they're all working pretty well. I've monitored them and they've, um, they, the temperature is quite constant on all of them. So I guess all my joints are good. Um, we run this, um, we've had it charged a few times and running it all night, we've got some pretty big heat pumps, one that's eight kilowatt and one six. And yeah, we got to really sort of um, run them all night to really get it drained low by the morning. So now it's working really well. Um, I'll go to the other side and just show the Solar X hybrid I've got there. Um, <clears throat> it's the SKTL with the separate charger. Now that's a 100 amp charger and that's a Solar X relay box. For when the power cuts that automatically kicks in because I guess as we all know with, um, with Solar if you get a power cut your power goes off as well because you can't um, you don't want to backfeed into any of the lines and hurt any of the linesmen. So this is the sophisticated switch that Solar X make, which is basically a safety feature of cutting off to ensure that it's safe and doesn't feed out. And then you put so many of your circuits on. So if the power goes down, basically the switch is over. It's limited to two kilowatts, but um, that's quite a lot to sort of keep your lights and your plugs and all that sort of stuff going. So. This Solex system um, on this side, I've got 20 panels on the roof, and these are all in series. It just runs at 400 volts, so it's 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 different to the other one, which is just DC inside the room. This is running higher, and it's obviously the inverter is just inverting and charging the feeding it to the charger, and then the charger is going through the wall, basically onto the battery and. This one, the two of them actually work pretty well together and they both just keep the battery charged. And the system is working well in as much as the DC one just keeps feeding the battery, slogging away. And the minute the other one sees that the battery is full and it's, there's a bit to spill, it just exports it. So now they're working really well together. That's the shunt I've got down there. I need to neaten up the wires a little bit. The shunt is... The, uh, basically that monitors the current flow and it's also got a safety cutoff that if the batteries drain below a certain amount it'll cut and equally if they go above a certain amount it'll cut. 
that's the new series Watchmon 4 um, that's a system that comes from Australia it's very simple to put in and um, works really well but I'll post some more later when I get this neatened up a bit more and we've had more time to um, really test it and see how it functions um, basically you could this a system like at any DIY that's got a basic knowledge of, of um, power and or maybe DC current could put this together I think one's just got to take care and um, it's you can't really get a shock um, 48 volts is considered ultra low current so yeah um, you can get burnt on it and it can be tricky so I guess you need to be pretty careful if you start fiddling with something like this but um, it's not just a Nissan Leaf battery there's other EV cars that you could try and get a battery from and um, they vary a bit in voltage so I guess you've got to look at the voltage side of it but this is working really well and well we haven't bought any power for quite a long time so many thanks this is William and um, I'll post another one in due course when I've tested it a bit further and we know a bit more about it Many thanks and bye.